All right, everyone, how's it going? I'm in New York City, where no one accepts a card payment, outside the American Museum of Natural History. And uh, there's one fossil in particular I really want to see. It may not be very glamorous, it's no T-Rex. It's called a stromatolite, and it's 3.5 billion, with a B, years old. Even though it's not very glamorous, what's cool about it is that it was made by single-celled organisms just pooping out sediment. And at the time they were doing this pooping, we were single-celled animals as well. Now I can kind of sympathize with creationists. It does seem pretty incredible, the transformation that we have undergone in this 3.5 billion years. If you want a full breakdown of our entire evolutionary history, check out Useful Charts video. Links in the pinned comment, he's going to break it all down. But it does seem incredible that this transformation has occurred. The thing is, is that nothing in nature makes sense without evolution. Our bodies are absolutely riddled with quirks and flaws that would have been really odd choices for a designer. The recurrent laryngeal nerve takes a detour from your brain all the way down to the heart before coming back up to the larynx. All tetrapods have this quirk. Giraffes have it, you have it, even a diplodocus would have had it. Ridiculously inefficient design. Tetrapods again have way too many bones, especially in joints like our wrists and ankles. Why include so many bones only to fuse them together? Bad design, terrible. Our heads can barely squeeze out of our mother's vaginas, making giving birth incredibly dangerous for humans. Really bad design compared to other primates past and present. 8% of your DNA, your whole genetic makeup is made up of ancient viruses. 8%. That's a lot, that's huge. Why would that be a built-in feature of our design? But there's one quirk that's probably caused more inconvenience than any other and that's your crappy sinuses. Have you ever noticed how humans get way more colds than other animals? I've had pets of all shapes and sizes my whole life, and I can honestly say I've never once seen them get a cold. One cause of this is the absolutely terrible design of our sinuses, particularly the maxillary sinus behind our cheekbones. When we breathe in, the air flows through four pairs of sinuses coming into contact with soggy mucous membranes. These filter dust and bacteria out of the air in order to prevent this nasty stuff reaching our lungs. They also warm and humidify the air we breathe. Naturally, these sinuses produce a lot of mucus that needs to drain away to prevent infection. This we can either swallow, which is not my preferred choice, or you can discreetly spit up a massive greenie and move on with your day. The maxillary sinus that sits behind your cheekbones has a problem though. The hole that allows mucus to drain isn't at the bottom like the drain in your sink, but right at the top of the sinus. This wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for a pesky thing called gravity. Now, the sinus is full of tiny little cilia that help push the mucus up towards that hole, but it doesn't take much for it to get blocked and for an infection to develop. So why does our body have this really useless feature? Well, it is possible that this feature came about as a result of us losing our snouts. All apes have pretty flat faces. For whatever reason, it was advantageous for our evolution to focus much more on sight and cognitive abilities rather than smell. Accordingly, if we're not using them, our snouts got smaller and smaller and the plumbing behind them got more and more cramped. All African apes have the same design flaw. Sadly, we have the flattest faces of all great apes, so even though chimps and bonobos and gorillas, all these guys, share this poor drainage system, the holes are much larger in their faces and their four sinuses are interconnected, so it's really less of a problem for them. The building blocks of this floor have been with us for an extremely long time, at least 38 million years, according to scans of the extinct primate Aegyptopithecus. No prizes for guessing where that fossil was discovered. However, what is very interesting to me is that Asian apes, such as orangutans, have evolved a much better system. For a start, they lost the two sets of frontal sinuses, so they only have two. And 
their maxillary sinuses evolved to drain in the direction of gravity. So, good for them. This means we could speculate that if humans had evolved in Asia rather than Africa, we might not suffer from the common cold. I love thinking about the, the twists and turns of evolution like that, it's so interesting to me. We really need to uh, remake Planet of the Apes, but this time he gets sent to a world full of orangutans and no one can help George Taylor blow his nose because they haven't needed to invent tissues. My nose. Why do these quirks persist for so long? Can't evolution solve this problem in 38 million years? Well, this really gets to, unfortunately, a fundamental flaw within evolution. Evolution, through natural selection, is really great at making small, gradual changes. It can keep making that laryngeal nerve one millimeter longer, one millimeter longer, but it's not good at executing a totally fundamental redesign. A small mutation in our DNA simply cannot reconfigure our entire facial structure, so every generation of an animal is just full of compromises, quirks, half-baked solutions, dare I say, flaws, Really, among the many problems with intelligent design, explaining the existence of all these biological glitches is one of the toughest. We're not intelligently designed at all. So there you have it. We get colds because we have super flat faces and this might not have been a problem if we had evolved in Asia, but we didn't. We evolved in Africa, so you still get a bunged up nose. Thanks to Useful Charts for collabing with me. Thanks to the American Museum of Natural History for putting up with me. Thanks to Arlene. Can't believe I forgot my spoon, but oh well. See ya. That's not bad.